opium. As far back as 3400 BC, opium poppies were grown in Lower Mesopotamia. The knowledge involved in extracting opium from them passed from the Sumerians to the Assyrians to the Babylonians to the Egyptians. In 330 BC, Alexander the Great brought opium to the Persians and the Indians. By 1527, it was again employed for medicinal purposes as an anesthet, but it was also used for recreational purposes and was involved in smuggling, drug trafficking. Henbane Hyacinus niger, which is better known as Hunbane, can have psychotropic effects. It's been used as an anesthetic since ancient times. Taken as a pill or smoked, it was used to relieve toothaches, earaches, and other maladies. As a toothache remedy, Hunbane was used to fumigate the mouth. After a patient rinsed his or her mouth with warm water, Hunbane seeds were sprinkled over hot coals. The rising smoke entered the mouth alleviating the pain of the toothache. Acupuncture The Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine is the first text in which acupuncture is set forth as an organized system of diagnosis and treatment, a concept important to treating various conditions by inserting needles in precise locations associated with these channels. Thereafter, the use of acupuncture spread to Japan and throughout Europe and the United States. Critics of the procedure suggest that its effectiveness as an anesthetic and as an agent for treating other conditions is mostly due to placebo effects. Mandragora One of the first anesthetics to actually render patients unconscious appears to be mandragora. The wine was made from the mandrake plant and caused a profound sleep to overtake surgical patients. In 13th century Italy, Ego Borgignini introduced the use of the soporific sponge to induce an anesthetic sleep. As sponge was soaked in a dissolved solution of opium, mandragora, hemlock juice, and other substances dried and stored. After being moistened, it was held over the patient's nose until its fumes caused him to lose consciousness. Datura Datura was a popular ancient pain reliever and sleep inducer. The drug had several serious side effects. A drachma taken with wine could cause hallucinations, while two drachmas could cause madness for as long as three days. A drachma tech greater quantities could cause permanent insanity or even dean with wine could cause hallucinations, while two drachmas could cause madness for as long as three days. Although Datura was effective in relieving patients' pain during ancient surgical procedures, it also resulted in their deaths when it was improperly administered. Ethylene. Apollo's Pythian nuns uttered prophecies after inhaling the gases from the line at the foot of the temple of the sun god. These gases may include ethylene, inhaled anesthetics. According to a surgeon who used ethylene in 800 operations, the substance that caused the patient to pass out in 3 to 8 minutes usually has no excitement or choking sensation. Its effects are also rapid after the loss of anesthetic. Ethylene has some disadvantages. On the small side, it smells bad. But ethylene can be used for any other type of activity. Cannabis As far back as 2900 BC, Chinese Emperor Fu observed that cannabis was known to be a pain reliever. From China, the practice of using cannabis to alleviate pain spread to other regions of the world. About 1000 BC, Indians began to mix cannabis with milk to create a painkiller known as bang. Later, cannabis was used to alleviate pain associated with earache, swelling, and inflammation. By AD 800, Arabic physicians used cannabis to relieve the pain of migraine headaches. Corydalus plant In ancient China, the tubers of the corydalus plant were dug up, boiled in vinegar, and used to alleviate the pain caused by headaches and backaches. Ancient Chinese doctors believed that the corydalus plant remedied pain because it improved the flow of the life force chi. Current research has shown that DHCB acts in a way similar to that of morphine. Scientists believe that the DHCB produced from the corydalus plant's tubers may become the drug of the future in combating several types of pain.
One of the means of alleviating pain was to render a patient unconscious. Ancient doctors sometimes squeezed the carotid arteries in their patients' necks, thereby reducing, if not temporarily shutting off, the blood flow from the heart to the brain. A sculpture on the south side of the Parthenon in Athens shows a centaur compressing the left carotid artery of a lapid warrior. This also indicates that the ancient Greeks were aware of the effectiveness of this technique in rendering an individual unconscious. Willow Bark the bark of the willow tree was used as an anti-inflammatory remedy that relieved pain. Dioscorides noted its power to reduce inflammation. Modern research suggests that willow bark is an effective painkiller because it contains salicin. Studies have also found willow bark to be more effective in treating pain than aspirin and at lower quantities. Due to its effectiveness, this centuries-old remedy is still used to relieve pain due to headache, backache, and osteoarthritis.